Hello everyone, it's Tana. Welcome back to the channel and another video for the Rabbit Hole Designs. Today we're going to be working with the new release for this month. And starting off with the sequins. So cool. I haven't seen sequins this original in a while. I love those leaves and I think we use those in today's video. And the little sunflower heads. Those will be cute in a shaker card. And I show you both just because I wanted to put them all in one bag. But look how shiny these leaves are. They're so sparkly looking. So in this month there are four, three, three stamp set, four, three stamp sets, one six by six background stamp, a stencil, and some hot foil dies. So here we're looking at, I believe this is called Cotton Flowers. Um, I'll have all the names on the screen for you. I'll put them up there before I upload the video. And then we have... I forgot what this one's called as well. This is what happens when you get kicked to the car for your voiceovers. Yeah, I was running late with this video. And everybody's awake and very loud in the house. So I turned on the air conditioning for 10 minutes in the car. And came out to the car to do my voiceover but I left the stamp sets in the house, so now I don't remember the names. But we will go, like I said, I'll put them all on the screen for you guys, and in the next video I'll read off the sentiments. How about that? I love the stencil because you have the masks as well, and it lines up perfectly with the 6x6 stamps, stamp. And there's all the masks. I did place them on the stamp off screen and they do fit just as well as the stencil itself. And I don't lay all these out on top of the stamp stamp set, but you get the idea. You have a hot foil die for each one, I believe. And that was a quick look at all of them. And here's a quick look at the entire release. And we're gonna get started on our cards. So I stamped out everything in the release. So for this one, I have that beautiful fall wreath and the two books. And I stamped those out on Bristol. I stamped out the cute little foxes on Bristol as well. And then I stamped out the cotton flowers on Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock. And now this one I did in black, but they were all heat embossed. This one in the fox is in black. The cotton flowers I did in clear embossing powder and clear ink for a little bit more of a no line coloring look. But we'll get to the cotton flowers in uh, the next video. And there's no shading really in this. Any shading that you see or combination of colors is just me adding the two colors together as best I can because I'm not quite sure how you blend color with iridescent or glitter watercolors. So I just did as best I could. All three images I'm using a combination of my Yuli watercolors. Uh, the watercolor palette I got off of Amazon. And you guys have seen me use that one before. And also the Gonzai Tambay um, gold palette with six different colors of gold in it. So and I think they turned out really cute. No Copic coloring for this video. None whatsoever. Now I am going to show you in today's video how I colored the foxes. But you won't see those cards until the next video. This one just became a little bit too long with all the coloring. but I wanted to give you guys a little bit of variation in how I'm adding color to my images. So we went with watercolor and zigs. Zigs for the foxes. Now the watercolor did pretty well on the Bristol, as long as you're not adding too much water. And because we're not going over these images with layer and layer and layer of color to get the color we want, and we're just using the metallic, the Bristol was able to handle 
the metallic uh, color very well. Now this is one of the leaves where I try to add in different colors, you know, because these are fall leaves. And on the other leaves, the green leaves, just they're kind of split in half with a stamped line, so I just alternated green on those ones to give it a little bit more of a fall color look. And we also have a little bit of a different uh, card shape for today's cards. Two cards we're making today. I had hoped it would be four, but like I said, time got a little bit away from me here. And it's not like I even showed you guys all of the color, and I kind of skipped through each section so that you would know what I colored, what type of image, you know. So here's a look at everything fussy cut. Here are the foxes. And here I'm going to show you all the colors I used. I believe this one is wine red, scarlet red, and bright yellow. And that red was a little bit too much of a deep red. So I did a couple leaves in that. And then I switched the color out. Oh my god. The, the heat in this car is tremendous already. I believe this is evergreen. Now this color for Zig is new to me. There's quite a few. Uh, red grape, light red grape, deep red grape. Those are new to me. Smoky teal and aquamarine which we do use on this fox's scarf. Those are all new to me. And then like smoky purple, uh, fog gray. I think it's called smoky purple. But here I'm gonna skip through, show you how I painted one of their ears and nose, noses, or cheeks. And then I'll skip ahead and I'll show you how I did their tail tips and their bottom of their face and maybe their tummy fur. Now for this one I went a little bit different. I used fog gray and then I used a warm gray too and a gray tint. And I used that fog gray as the deep shadow line of the fur and combined it with the warm gray and it actually turned out pretty good. Now for the color of the foxes themselves I wanted them to be true red foxes. So we went in with brown and then orange and then light brown and we combined it with our blender pen. I feel like if I were to use a watercolor brush, you know, like a wet brush or a watercolor brush on this, I would have ended up using too much water and uh, buckling the Bristol Smooth paper. You guys might hear a knock in a second. And here I am using the smoky teal and the aquamarine on the fox's scarf. He's a cute little guy, isn't he? I think that smoky te uh, teal and aquamarine look good together. So now we're going to have them all fussy cut out after you get a good look at them. Oh man, it's hot in here, guys. So now here's everything I've cut out that I was hoping to use in today's video, but of course the foxes have to wait till another day. Now my card fronts, or my card bases, are going to be five by five. My card fronts are going to be four and a half by four and a half. And the card mats, the black ones, we'll get to in a minute. Now for this card front, I'm going to score it every quarter inch. I'm scoring it, of course, vertically, but I'm going to end up using it horizontally. And instead of being debossed on the front of my card, it will be with the side that's embossed facing up. Then I took the second card front and I turned it like a diamond and made sure those points were at equal points on the scoreboard and then scored every half inch. Turned it, I believe it's 180 degrees so it looks like shiplap. And then scored it another half inch all the way across. And it was getting a little tight to maneuver, so I had to turn it around there so I could come from the other side. 
man, that EC disappears quick when you turn it off. So now we're going to trim down our two black mats. The final size of both of them are four and three quarters by four and three quarters, leaving just a little bit of a frame from the card base and then a little bit of black frame around the card front itself. Now they both go on the same way, but I'm going to spare you the trouble of seeing me pick off all those release strips, you know, for another five seconds of, or five minutes of the video. That seems to take forever. Then we're going to adhere our front panels to the card backs. And then, oh, I did that one, that first one with the horizontal lines. I made sure they were going hor uh, horizontal. And then on both of them, I made sure that they were on the deep boss side facing up so that there was raised edges in the texture. Now we're going to adhere the fall wreath to the up, upper center of the card. You just got to play with it because there's one little area where there's a ton of like glue because I put too much on. Now we're going to add our sentiments and I have heat embossed with gold embossing powder. Autumn is calling, or no, falling leaves, autumn is calling, something like that for the one with the books, and then autumn holds a wonder all its own on the wreath card. I apologize for the airplane, but it adds a little bit of a na natural touch, doesn't it, when you hear no voices but only an airplane, some bird tweets, a dog barking. Now somewhere along the line I lost the footage between adhering the first book with foam tape and the second book with foam tape. So you see me putting a little bit of glue on the foam tape for this last part of the sentiment. You'll see that we accidentally jump ahead to where the book is already adhered. So I put a little oops uh, photo in there for you. Now here's everything all said and done. We have the leaves on that book square card and just a little bit of the clear enamel drops colored with orange Copic on the second card. Here are the foxes to remind you what part of what you'll see in the next video. Hope you guys like what you saw here today. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you did and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of all new videos. Don't forget to join Rabbit Hole Designs on Instagram because there's always new inspiration from the DT and don't forget about the rabbit hole designs email so you can be aware of all new giveaways we'll see you next time guys bye bye for now